Hello and welcome guys to another video where we talk about carbon markets, carbon credits and how to make money with carbon. If you enjoy content like this then please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on this topic. Today we're going to talk about the European carbon market, the EU ETS, so European Emission Trading System. The EU ETS is one of the major policy instruments that the European Union uses to comply with its climate goals. The ETS was launched in 2005 and is designed as a cap and trade system. That means that the regulator sets a maximum amount of what you can pollute, a so-called cap. The cap is a maximum amount of what factories and electrical installations and so on can produce in terms of carbon emissions. And under the ETS, a company must show a permit for each ton of CO2 that they emit. So this means that companies that produce less than the cap, than the maximum amount of allowed emissions, get a surplus of permits and companies that produce more than that need to buy in permits. And these companies can then trade with each other. The EU ETS covers a lot of sectors, for example, heat and energy generation, but also heavy industries like cement, lime, steel, and also paper production, as well as fluoral gases and also the aviation sector inside of the European economic area. In some sectors, installations underneath a certain size are exempt from the EU ETS. And the aviation sector until 2024 only inside the economic area of Europe. The implementation of the EU ETS consisted of four phases. Phase one was the pilot system to demonstrate the proof of concept. It concentrated only on CO2, power generation and energy intensive industries. The cap was set at a national level and it was only EU emission allowances that were able to trade. Then was the phase two from 2008 to 2012. This had a clear goal of 8% reduction of 1990 levels and included also Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein focused on CO2 but also on nitrous oxide for voluntary member states and included also the aviation sector. And the cap was decreased of 6.5% from phase one, but you could also trade certified emission reductions and emission reduction units, that means credits from outside the EU. Then we had the third phase from 2013 to 2020, 21% emission reductions from 2005, also including the same countries, now with the fluorocarbons and with aluminum production added. And the cap was now set EU-wide and now auction them as a mechanism everywhere. And you could also trade the credits from outside the EU. And since 2021, we entered in phase four. Phase four consists of a 43% reduction from the 2005 levels. And now the cap will shrink even faster. Before it was 1.74% per year, now it is 2.2%. In the sectors that are critical, that they think will move outside the EU, there will still be 100% of the free allowances distributed. Sectors that are not in danger of moving outside the EU will be phased out after 2026. First 30% and then 0%. And with some part of the money, they will set up an innovation fund and a modernization fund. So does this actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions? The official stance is that in the last 16 years, the EU ETS has reduced greenhouse gases by almost 43%. A more conservative study said that it has only reduced by 3.8% compared to a world without a carbon market. That is because the Western world is reducing their carbon emissions anyway. We are switching mostly towards climate friendly solutions. So the question is, does this really serve a purpose? However, in 2020 and 2021, speculators have discovered the carbon markets for themselves. The price of carbon has shot through the roof. That is the European price of carbon. In the crash of 2020, it was down to 15 euros. Now it's above 80, even 90. That's like a six fold increase from the lowest low to the highest high. So we could say that the markets have become very interesting for investors and speculators. 
So what are some of the criticism? So the EU ETS has been criticized from several sides. First of all, the NGOs and the climate organizations have criticized it for being not strict enough on polluters that it actually helps polluters to pollute more and so they can buy themselves out of that and also that they can use old and a bit shady allowances as well as that the money from the income of the carbon markets has been badly spent. But there is another side to the criticism also. We are now experiencing one of the record numbers of inflation and so with price increases of fuel and consumable goods, there's even an additional price on top of that that is basically the carbon tax on top of the regular price. So when prices already go up, then they go up even more in Europe because we cannot pollute, we cannot use different methods of producing energy. So this creates an additional problem. What if there is a problem with the renewable energy or the energy system in general and we need to use other technologies at the moment? Then the price is very high for these technologies that are still a bit carbon intensive. So we have to think about that. So how can we invest in the EU ETS? So there are several ways to invest in the EU carbon markets. I have covered them already in other videos, but I will still repeat it here. The first and easiest is probably to buy the KRBN ETF. This ETF consists of two thirds European Union allowances, EUAs. So it's not 100% European carbon market, but most of it. Then there is the IPATH Series B Carbon ETN, also known as GRN. This is, to my knowledge, 99% EUAs, European Union allowances, but is an ETN. And then I found something interesting. To my knowledge, this is only available on German exchanges. Under the ticker CU3RPS, you can find an unlimited tracker certificate of carbon futures. So very interesting. You can buy that on German exchanges. This is basically the carbon emission future price. And this certificate tracks the price of carbon emissions and is also quite liquid. So very interesting. These are, to my knowledge, the three ways how you can participate in the EU carbon market as a private investor. But of course, if you're an institutional investor, that means a professional investor, a company, then you can go to the energy exchange or the intercontinental exchange and buy the carbon futures directly on the exchange. And this is also where most of the trading is done. Most of the trading is done by institutional investors. As always, I want to know what you think of the EU ETS. Do you think it is interesting to invest in the EU ETS? Are you buying carbon futures from Europe? Let me know in the comment section. Also check out the Discord server and the Facebook group in the description below. And please give this video a like, support this channel and I will see you in the next video.